How do we use the internal modifier on a class? And what is it used for? It's a great question. So the vehicle class that we have here is a very simple class that just takes a color of a vehicle and then we can print it out. Now, of course, this class would have a lot more information about a particular vehicle, etc. However, let's go ahead and assume that this vehicle has some axles. So we need another class. So we're gonna create a class called axle and we're gonna have a count. And this count is gonna be, actually it's called number. And it's gonna be an integer value. And that's basically the number of wheels. So we'll say number of wheels on the axle. And then of course there would be a whole bunch of other stuff inside of this axle class that would do things for us. But we're gonna leave that out for brevity here. Now we know that the vehicle is gonna have a number of axles. So let's go ahead and say axles and then we're gonna have it as an array of axle. Now, of course, we don't know what that is given this period in time. So we're going to actually go ahead and apply the late init modifier saying, Kotlin, I don't know what it is right now at compile time. I'm going to initialize it later. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. So this all makes sense. We have a public class. Uh, we have axles. And then we might even have something else like a another class. And this one's going to be uh, a truck because perhaps we know that the truck is going to be, of course, it's going to be a vehicle. And we need to pass in the color. Uh, and then for whatever reason, we already know that a truck, this truck that we're building, uh, or all trucks in our application are going to have some axles. So we say axles equal, uh, we'll say array of, and it allows us to create an array, and I can say axle. And perhaps this first axle has two wheels, and this next axle has four wheels. Basically meaning we have two axles, one with two wheels in the front, four on the back. So this all makes sense. This is great. If we go back to our main class, we can easily create a vehicle as I've done here. I can actually say vehicle.axles. I can see the axles. I can say val truck equals truck. And I can pass in blue. And the truck's gonna have axles I can have access to. But let's go ahead and assume for whatever reason that we do not want anybody outside of our current module to know about this axle class. Maybe we only want to expose things about the vehicles, but internally for organizational purposes, we want to be able to have a class that represents an axle. Maybe it has a bunch of utility methods that just helps us do things inside of our application, but we don't want other people to know about this class or even be able to use it. We just kind of want to keep it internal to us. Like this is our class. It's for us to do work with. We don't want anyone else using it. There is a way to do that. And you can apply the internal modifier to the class. Now notice we got a bunch of errors automatically right out of the gate. So right here in, in axles, it says public property exposes an internal type argument axle, which means over here in main, if I were to type t dot axles, well, we would have a, a, the ability to have that. So now this is can be interesting if we don't want that to happen. So what I can do is I can actually say, hey, you know what? I don't want uh, axles to be. I can't basically Kotlin saying, hey, look, you cannot expose axles because axles is internal to this module, meaning that you can use it in this module. We'll compile everything together inside of perhaps you're building a library. We'll compile everything together but we're only going to expose vehicle and truck because those ones are public. However, you said, here's an axle class, it's internal, so don't expose it, but you're trying to expose it here, so don't do that. So in this case, what I really need to do is actually say put private axles. Now, as we see here, uh oh, now we have another problem. Okay, can I access because it's private? So what we can do is then we say, you know, let's change this to protected because we have a child class, now we have protected. And what do we have here? protected uh, exposes its internal type argument. Okay, so now we have a whole different situation of maybe we don't want to expose these axles. So you have to start rethinking your API design at this point in time if you want your axles available inside of these other types here. And so maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to put it as private. It's like this. So now you have your, ax your, your axles that are private. And then perhaps you want to say the number of axles in the wheels, and you just want to expose this as a function. So you could do that. So you say add axle, and you say uh, number of wheels, int. And then what you could do is you could do something like this. And all this would do is it would say axles dot, 
And you know, we just turn this into a list actually to make it a little bit easier to work with. We say axles dot, and we need to make this actually a mutable list. So we can actually change it. Otherwise we have a read only list, add, and then we'll say axle, and then we'll pass in the number of wheels. And there we go. Now we can actually have that. And so if we know that we need this, we can say add axle, say two, add axle, four. Now what this is allowing us to do is have this axle class inside of our module, but not allow it outside of the public API. So if we are over here, now we could say t dot add axle. So I could still kind of work with the axles, but it's hidden behind an API here. So I said add axle on a vehicle. So the vehicle can also add an axle. But if I were to try to do anything with that axle, such as return it, maybe I want to say, all right, well, let's return the axle. Someone might think so. So we say, you know, get axles. So you get axle info. And what we're going to do is we're going to return all the axles. We'll return a list of axle. Well, as you can already see, we have a problem. Public function exposes internal return type axle. So even if I wanted this, get axle info, this is not going to work because Kotlin is going to say, look, this is internal. You're trying to expose this as a public API. We're not going to allow that to happen. So perhaps I need to just expose some additional information. I expose them in strings, and then maybe for whatever reason, I iterate over them or whatever. Now, if I do need my class to be accessible outside, then internal is not going to work. However, it's very useful if you have a particular class where you need to encapsulate behavior, but you don't want to expose its behavior and all of its intricacies to the outside public, and you don't want anyone to be able to call it. You want that to perhaps any of the interaction with that internal class to happen through its public API, such as we're doing here in the main class. If I want to add a axle to a, a vehicle, I can say number of wheels, three or four or whatever. And maybe this method perhaps does a bunch of validation and a bunch of checking uh, before it actually creates this axle class, or maybe it has to do a whole bunch of other things that your, your application maybe goes out and checks to see if, you know, our any axles available at the manufacturer? Can we even add an axle right now? What is an axle, et cetera? So there's a whole bunch of things you can do, but it allows you to lock down your API internally. And so you kind of want to play with it and see what works best for you, but it's very useful for hiding bits of code and functionality and logic inside of your application, but still providing you with the ability to be organized inside of your module.